Hey YouTube, this is Jeff. I'm um, working on my 2001 Toyota, um, oh, I was going to say Sienna, Toyota Town & Country. And the problem I'm having right now is with uh, uh, the seat switch. As I try to tip it up and down uh, in the front, it doesn't work. So I was able to disassemble it and figure out what's going on. There's multiple different motors. So you have one motor here that's got a screw worm drive right here that actually raises and lowers this over here. This is for the rear of the seat. Then up here you have the front of the seat. You see there's a pin out here, and then you see that there's also a pin missing here. Well, uh, the bottom part of the worm drive or the screw drive over here, there's a pin that's what came out of here. I basically just took a punch and just punched it out, pop, pop that out. The bottom part over here was a little more tricky. I had to get a pry bar in here. Oop, let's see if I can get a video of this here. I had to get a pry bar in here and push this roll pin out. But obviously I can't push it all the way through, so I made these little pieces of metal here, okay? So consecutive sizes so I can push it a little further, a little further, and I really need to make one a little bigger, but I made it to work. And so I was able to push it and get it to push out, okay? So the problem is that this one over here, it would turn on, or this one over here, it would turn on and off no problem, but it wouldn't actually do anything. Well, I took it apart, let me show you why, okay? Head over into my shop over here, or my garage anyways. And this is the drive here, okay? So this one over here had a couple little screws, okay, here. And I was just able to pop the two screws off. Here's the two screws. One had a nut on it. And then I open it up and I see this. I see that there are physically teeth chewed off of this worm drive. And this is clearly going to make it to where this is not going to work. Okay, I see there's three teeth missing. Okay, this sits in here. Oops, let me see if I can do a video. Here, here you go. This sits in here like this. So as this motor spins, this will not turn because the teeth are missing. So this is the component that's bad. Um, I try to do as much uh, fabrication repair as I can um, with most things, just simply because I don't. I hate having to go to the junkyard. Uh, but this one over here, I don't think if I glued these, they would last. Um, if I plastic welded them, they might, but unfortunately, I just really don't feel like dealing with it, and I got to go to the junkyard anyways to get a part, so I'm just going to go ahead and get another gear while I'm there. Um, let's see if this thing comes off. Uh, no, it's it's pinch weld. See, that's right there. They put it through, and then they pinch it together, so it comes as one. Yep, it won't come off. So I'm going to have to get this whole piece or this whole motor, um, but I've tried to take off just the parts that I need while I'm in the junkyard. Uh, because then they charge me less. If I had to get this whole motor system, they'll probably charge me 20 bucks. If I do this, I'll just say, hey, I just got a bolt. They'll probably say, okay, you just take it. They usually don't care. So I get as small as pieces as I need. So anyway, so that's the reason why the motor wasn't working. Uh, and as I said, in that system, let me show you back out in the car now. Uh, there are multiple different motors um, in this seat. Uh, so... I'll show you here so this one over here does the back part of the seat so the rear of the seat over here kind of lifts up okay and then it also has one to the front of the seat lifts up that's the one that's defective on mine then you also have this motor over here that runs to this gearbox and to this gearbox which actually makes the seat go forward and backwards so i'll turn that on for you okay so you can see it spins and that actually lifts make the seat go forward and backwards. It looks like it's lifting right now because I have the seat lying backwards, obviously, so I can work on it. Okay, and this back one over here, the way that it properly works, okay? Come on, uh, I gotta get to, there it is. There's a switch. Come on, I gotta hold this switch properly. Okay, there it is. So you can see the way that that works is it just spins out there, okay? And then I'll show you on the side over here, there's linkages, okay, that actually make it lift. Okay, let's, let's see here. Let's see if I can get both out of the frame. Okay, there you go. See, you can see it come up and back down. Oops, come on. So see it collapse? Yeah, I'm sure you can see that. So anyways, this one does the same thing on this rod. So as you move this rod, oh, come on, let's see. Ugh, it's kind of hard, it's tight. <laughs> Hang on, let me see if I can get it freed up. There it goes. You can see it kind of moves on the side as well. This one's kind of tight. That's probably what burned the motor up. So as you can see there. So anyway, so that's the way the system works. 
Um, I hope that that helps to explain the way that everything works. Uh, to take the seat out, there's just four bolts underneath. I grabbed a 21 millimeter. It's probably something in standard. Who knows? But I like metric because that's all I freaking have in my toolbox. That's convenient. And it took the bolts right off. There's four major bolts. There's the ones that are right here and here. But pushing that pin out was a real pain in the butt. So you're going to have to make yourself some little, these are like little eighth inch pins or something out of steel. So I had to do that and that took probably half an hour to push that pin out. It's kind of a pain. And I don't see a better way to do it other than to start. See, originally with the seat, it was riveted on down here. And I'm just not going to start cutting rivets and stuff like that. Uh, so otherwise, there's not go. Now, I didn't want to push it back this way. So if I push it that way, then I could never force it back in. Now, when I get the new part, I just come over here and just tap it. And it will go right in and drive right on through. So it will be really easy. So on my vehicle, this front one's not working. And on that seat over there, the back one's not working. So I'm going to assume it's probably the same failure. Uh, in fact, I'll show you while we're here. It's operating the same. And I'll show you what it sounds like so you know that. Okay, let's see here. No, that one's working. Yeah, you can see that one's going down. Okay. Well, it was it was working a second ago. Oh, it's working now. Ah, who knows? Let's see here. Yeah, it's working. Okay, now the back one. Yeah, the back one's working too. Well, well, I guess I'm not going to take that one apart. I was testing it the other day when I was driving, uh, and it wasn't working. So that one goes down now. Now this one. Oh, that one's not. Okay, there it goes. Something's wrong with it. Maybe it's a switch. Yeah, it's down there. Yeah, this part down there. Uh, you know what? It is the same damn thing. See, let me see if I can manually. Let me try to set my phone here. I'm gonna manually lift it, and I'll bet you I can get it past that gear. Okay, let's see. Yeah, there you go. I'm gonna manually lift it and see. No. Nope. That's the same part. It's right here. So. Basically, when I was going up and down with it, it was going, stopping, going, stopping, going, stopping. So I'll bet you what that means is that one of those teeth are bad. And as it had energy, it would just pass that tooth and keep going. So that's the same problem I'm having. It's the same broken gear. So I'm going to get two of those when I go to the junkyard, rebuild these bad boys, and I'll be set. Okay, well, hope that helps. Later, YouTube.